What's up everybody? It's Carpo here. It's February 28th, 2019, and this is my uh, daily podcast slash video. Honestly, I was sitting here for a minute, and I thought, I don't even want to make a video right now. But I'm going to anyway, because otherwise I'll be thinking all day I should make this video. I had a few different thoughts on my mind, but over the last day or so, you know, I, I take notes generally in my mind and on a whiteboard, and I think about things, and think, eh, is that worth talking about? And I had been kind of considering... Interesting, I just had a deja vu. It's really strange. Uh, don't get those very often anymore. Uh, deja vu is so weird, isn't it? Um, it has to do with dopamine. When I was taking Makuna with L-Dopa in it, I had significantly more. I mean, I would have deja vus like every day. It was the weirdest experience. And then I started researching Alzheimer's patients and uh, taking medication and their how they have had a lot of deja vu. So it's a weird experience. But um, I wanted to talk about a couple of things, about kind of having what we, well, I'll get into, the, into that aspect. It's kind of like what helps us in life and what, what can we really benefit from in our own lives as far as um, what we allow into our minds and our hearts. Um, and before that, uh, and I also, oh, I also wanted to talk about personality types. Somebody asked me uh, what I thought about personality types uh, recently, and another person asked me uh, what my, uh, my type was and this kind of type, you know, the whole INTP, ESTP. Uh, this is the 16 personality types according to this, what is it, the, uh, the Briggs-Meyer, is that what it is? Yeah, Briggs-Meyer, or Myers-Briggs type indicator. So any, anyhow, I've done a little bit of research into this one, and uh, somebody else asked me a question uh, about astrology the other day, and what I think about that, and so I kind of wanted to go into detail on that. I have an astrology uh, guide here, and I've gone through, it, through and done all my charts, and uh, I find it very interesting, but uh, as far as how useful it is, you know, I wanted to, I guess, talk a little bit about that. Before I get there, you know... Uh, <laughs> I guess I kind of wanted to talk about this Alex Jones thing. It's pretty funny, you know. I, it's because it has to do with personalities, and the way that I, I've always kind of been anti Jones. You know, I've made videos talking about shit about him in the past, but uh, I like the guy. I know that may sound ridiculous from anybody who's an Alex Jones hater. I don't like what he does, but I know that he has, underneath that skin, a good heart, and he means well. And others may disagree, but. Him and Joe Rogan, you know, they have kind of this, you might call it like a, Alex Jones gets really frustrated at Rogan because Rogan kind of pokes fun at him, but they're friends and they've actually hung out and interacted. So they're, they're not just, you know, acquaintances on the show, but he's been on Joe's podcast several times. Well, he just came on the other day and I, I listened to it this morning while I was doing stuff around the house and I, I didn't catch the whole thing, but he is the funniest guy. I mean, he's just, you can tell he's, he's trying so hard, you know, to pull himself back up out of the muck and the mire because he was, you know, banned from all these different channels. And I'm not going to say I totally agree with the way he was handled by the, the mainstream being totally dismissed because, yeah, he did say some things that were very inflammatory and horrible about, you know, things, uh, especially having to do with Sandy Hook and other, uh, he instigated a lot of you know, what others may take as hatred, regardless of whether he sees himself as a showman or not, which he knows he's a showman. And it's just maybe he doesn't realize how big his impact really was. But hearing them talk about things was really funny. And he, 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 God, he called himself, he says, well, I'm kind of retarded at one point. And then he's like, uh, said something about how he thinks he's getting Alzheimer's. And then he thinks he has brain damage. And all three of those together, I was thinking, you know, what is he trying to account for, you know, cover up for here? But uh, he was arguing with another guy on the show because Alex Jones believes that the Earth is a sphere, you know. He doesn't believe in flat Earth. So being a conspiracy guy, he was arguing with this guy, Eddie, who is a flat earther. And uh, it was just the funniest thing because it wasn't about the substance. That's not what I'm trying to talk about here. It was about the fact that even though they may disagree on many points, all three of them can sit and talk about it and laugh and walk away and shake hands and smoke a joint together. And I think that that's what it should always be about. And the thing is that Alex Jones is taken way too seriously. 
there was this one to one part of it where he was talking about DMT and these tests where they uh, have these people who contact alien entities through DMT. And, and it was just funny hearing it because Joe understands DMT. So he was like, well, what do you mean? Since Alex has never tried it himself, he doesn't know what he's talking about in that sense. So when people say they meet an entity or speak to a being, you know, it's different than actually being one-on-one -on -one with this, you know, a guy or a creature that's talking to you. I can't explain it. There's no way anybody can if you haven't been there. But psychedelics do take you to some strange realms, and they were talking about evil, and uh, Alex was saying how everything is evil, you know, when you're in those realms, and, and any time you connect with another entity or a being or an energy that it's somehow nefarious or evil. And that part I kind of thought about, and that's kind of one of the main points I wanted to make. A lot of folks see the world that way. They think that anything that they come across that is mysterious is evil. And that this has traditionally been a very common trait throughout humanity. There's been a lot of paranoia and persecution and fear over things that are not understood. Xenophobia, for one, you know, not understanding other people and other cultures, but if something amazing happens to a person, you may take that as either a miracle or the possession of the, by the devil, you know, and I think the way we perceive these things says a lot about how we view the world. And a lot of people really want to see positive in the world, but they tend to fall into negativity and like one thing that Jen said was, <clears throat> he said, I like to go to the light and stay out of the darkness. And I thought, but you're just immersed in the darkness. That's the thing. He can't escape because his whole persona is built on building frustration and, and resentment and fear and anger and hostility towards those who are in charge or we feel are controlling our lives. And it's a lack of control, a, a feeling of a lack of control. Because if we can't get control over our own lives, then we point the finger at others and it's their fault. And unfortunately, it's very similar with a lot of people who speak just like Jones and in a whole realm of different subjects where what they're saying gets taken out of context and uh, utilized by movements that want to either prove that they are better than others or uh, that somebody else is somehow inferior uh, such as Jordan Peterson himself he's not a hateful person but many of the people who listen to him end up being you know leaning towards being frustrated young men that's understandable. It doesn't mean that what he's saying is wrong, nor does it mean that, you know, all the people who listen to him are that way. But if a lot do, then others may say, well, look, this person's instigating hatred. So with Alex Jones, it's the same way. In his mind, he's just exposing the corruption in the world, but the rest of the people take it as, it's war, you know. And um, there are a lot of people out there who want that war. Actually, I was d debating with a guy on the video I made the other day about flat earth, and he sent me to a video, He's, uh, he was arguing for the earth being flat, and he said, uh, there's a, a, a live, live video going on right here, you should go over and debate there. And I went over and checked the video out, I was a little late for the live part, but it was a couple hours of this guy, a vegan warrior, I guess was his name. And I kind of clicked into it a little ways to see, kind of, after he got into it, what he was talking about. And he was going on about how, if we're ever going to build an army to defeat the government, we have to get more people on board with this Flat Earth movement. And I was like, this guy's trying to build an army to defeat the government and using Flat Earth as a way to... I mean, this goes so far against anything, any type of explaining or understanding of what that means, but it's a frustration and a person's using a belief system in order to enact a type of hostile frustration or at least dream about it. So, you know, having large armies to overthrow the government is nothing new. <laughs> I mean, people have been trying to pull that shit off for, you know, forever. And maybe, maybe rightfully so. But one more thing about people feeling like everybody else is out to get them um, is a lot of folks, I've been, I hear a lot about mind control. And I think, you know, what are people trying to cover up when they use the mind control excuse? You know, people do stupid things all the time. But it's amazing that we can function at all. It seems like as a species, there's this amazing connection between us where when people say, oh, people are shitty drivers, look, there's accidents over here, and two accidents and one stretch of road. And I'm like, but what about the thousands of people who aren't getting in accidents? I mean, we really operate it as an amazing creature. But uh, so anyhow, we're... we're um, I don't believe in the mind control bullshit. Not that people 
haven't been able to control the mind, or in the future, I'm sure we will be able to, um, we can already, you know, operate parts of the brain to make limbs move, or to remove, or bring people's memories back. You can make people forget things, or not be able to do, you know, we're, we're going to get into some crazy neuroscience in the future. I'm sure they'll be using things like CRISPR to modify our brains and our synapses, and it, that's the transhumanism thing, and a lot of people are scared of that, and that's something I can totally understand. But it's not going to stop just because, you know, it, it's not going to stop. It's just that people are so so curious that they will try anything. And yeah, there are people who will, will inject a serum into them, even if there's a chance of death, if it's something that might give them, you know, an amazing connection to the universe or... Uh, you know, newfound intelligence. I mean, people are very innately curious. So what we have to do is work with that. We have to work with what we believe and work with the way things are. So I guess my point in that is that a lot of the conspiracy realm is complaining about how things should be or what we think they're like instead of dealing with things as they are. Um, it's the circle of concern, circle of influence. Things in your concern, you can't do anything about. Things in your influence, you can. So you use the energy where it's needed the most. So um, ultimately, a lot of people are just bored or lonely, and finding connection in a community is important. So we don't we don't know what we value until it's gone. Sometimes, so we're going along in life, and uh, something can fall apart, you know, quickly in our lives, where we end up being. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. I'm thinking I heard a sound outside, so it threw me off for a minute. It must be my wife home with the garbage can. I heard the garbage can being pulled up, is what it was. So uh, I'm going to move on now to the, this idea that uh, why is everybody so pissed off? That was kind of how I even wanted to start this video, so I'm probably going to title it that, because that's the main point I wanted to make. Everybody's angry and hostile and mad at each other. We can't have any rational discourse, and the people who are the most frustrated are often the ones who are the most, the feel the most lonely, or the mis most disconnected from others, because it's that disconnection which leads people to be more hostile, especially online. So, instead of dealing with those people with more hatred, you know, it's easy to want to be cynical or sarcastic towards them, but people really need connection. And so, when you get to know a person and understand them, you realize why everybody's pissed off. There's a, there are a lot of reasons. One of them is, right now, there's a lot of division being pushed in society. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and guess whether or not it's propaganda that's pushed by the left or the right. It's people who really don't have a political party or even care. It's the people with the power and with the money who would rather keep us distracted fighting amongst ourselves about silly things. But the extreme division among not just uh, a couple things, but we've got, like I mentioned the other day, the red pill thing. Well, we, that's, that is a direct response to f the extreme feminism movement, right? We have religion, and then we have atheism, active atheism, I call it, as a direct response to the extreme active religion. Instead of just being a passive believer or non-believer, you're out pushing that on others or trying to convince others. Um, we have a huge issue with with racism lately, which I'm not going to get into whether it's worse or better. That's not the point. But we have an alt-right, and then we have the social justice warrior. And the alt-right was almost kind of a direct response to the social justice movement that, uh, you know, those are the extremes, you know, the extreme sides. And then there's politics, and politics identity, which is complete bullshit. not just politics themselves, but identity politics, which fall into every realm of our lives. And uh, we want to identify with the group. We want to be part of a group. And that's our natural, you know, tendency. And that's been exploited for a very long time by corporations, by governments, by friends, by neighbors and family. You know, everybody exploits one another for their own gain, and they don't even realize it. But we tend to push our values even when we're not sure if we're right or wrong. If somebody in our group says something is a certain way, we tend to agree. Now, that's not always true. There is a lot of, you know, open-minded disagreement within all of the groups that I mentioned, but you can see how there's a direct correlation between those extreme, you know, extremes, and that 
you know, 99% of people fall somewhere in the middle. 99% of us haven't have been totally wronged by a woman or wronged by a man to where we hate women or hate men, but a few have. And you better believe they're going to have the loudest voices. That's just how it is. Well, not all of us have had racial injustice, but those who have are definitely going to have the loudest voice. Um, not all of us have, you know, anything. We're all different people. So our identity politics are really a bunch of bullshit that is based on our preconceived notions about the way things are, as well as our unwillingness to look further within to find out who we really are. And the more we discover the self, the more we can avoid the pitfalls and traps. And if you've experienced that yourself, you'll know what I mean. But it, if you haven't worked on the self and started to understand the self, then we're often going to try to understand the rest of the world instead. It's almost like a distraction. So um, the thing is, all issues matter. All of the issues I mentioned, you know, whether it's the, the you know, the feminism or the red pill movement, the alt-right or the SJW groups, everybody has a point and everybody has to be respectfully listened to whether or not we agree. We have to come up with counterpoints that are legitimately accurate even though people may not look at the facts we can't just argue with semantics and bullshit and sound bites that we hear from other people i don't know how many times i've said something and then heard somebody just repeat a sound bite that they obviously heard on the news or somewhere else but there's another problem to that you can't even have your own opinion anymore without you being one of them it's a division tactic i can't just say well i don't believe this without somebody saying oh well then you must be in cahoots with this group you know that's the disconnect that you can't be in the middle. You can't have a gray area. You can't be a truly independent person according to the way a lot of folks think. And honestly, we all do lean towards biases. So that's expected, you know. But it's up to us to pull ourselves back into that balance every time and to remember. But there are some extremes where, you know, <laughs> where we feel like we have to start a movement to change something. And the problem with these movements, especially lately, is that with the internet and the inventing, inv you know, the advent of uh, Facebook and various social media groups, these movements descend into mobs, and then those mobs can often resort to violence. And a few people can be put within these mobs to make it look like the entire mob is violent, on both sides, all sides, as they say. So. We are overreacting right now to our inside world, not the outside world. In other words, I really firmly believe that it's not what's going on in the world that's so crazy. It's the way we look at it and the fact that we're obsessed with it. If you're still on Facebook and you're looking at the, you know, these crazy news articles, of course your feed is going to be full of them. You know, I got rid of my Facebook about six months ago, again, because I just said it wasn't worth it to me to have to see all this garbage and nonsense. It's not about hiding from the discussion, it's about hiding from the bullshit. Because the true discussion goes on in forums where people are respectful to one another and, and have discourse. So we have a, a memory distortion about the way things were, and then we learn uh, about history, but we don't know as much as we really think we know. And so then we look at our lives and we compare our what we see as our life to the illusion of other people's lives who look at this person they're happy they're rich they're famous and that's the illusion i like to say you know everybody wakes up naked and takes a shit doesn't matter who you are so um it's, it's important i think to remember that it's a really key a key thing that we're all struggling and we're all fighting the same struggle and uh if a person seems too too there's a balance between arrogance and humility that you have to have. You can't hate yourself, but you can't overly love yourself, you know, and we all know that, but it's what brings up addictions. It's what causes our addictions and compulsions and our frustrations is our lack of connection. Because if you have connection, if you have family, if you have friends, those you love and those that love you, that connection can, can do amazing things. I know it has for me. I've had some shit happen in my life. I could have gone any direction, but I've tried to remain stable. I've got a loving wife and family and a mom, and I just, you know, I'm really grateful for what I do have. It's important. We're always grateful for what we have. Every bit of growth is small changes over time. I'm not going to just wake up one day and be like, I'm a better person. I feel great. And we have to remember we can't always be happy. 
we just have to decide to transmute our thoughts. Um, and I said I was going to get into <laughs> these the the astro I wanted to get into the astrology and the type talk a little bit more because I said I was going to, but I wanted to say about that. I figured the reason I'd cover this that at the end. What matters most is what we get out of the now, this moment. Everything that we learn in our lives, in my opinion, should help to better ourselves so we can better understand and embrace the now. Even with all the things I've learned in my life, I still find myself twiddling my thumbs, ready to go on to do the next thing, looking, what, we've made this joke about it, we call it the next best thing. And over the years, I've come to the conclusion that if I'm going to work on embracing the now, I can't be worried about what might happen in the future. Because of that, I've refused to look at any more of my astrological information because I believe it may skew my view of what might happen, and when it, or who I am, rather, if I were to believe it. I may look at all these personality traits of a Sagittarius and say, damn, that's just like me, but then find one that's maybe not and say, well, maybe I am that way and then tend to be that way. In other words, I want to be a fully my fully natural self based on my experiences, not a book that tells me who I am. So, astrology is fascinating. I believe that it's rooted in a little bit of truth somewhere back in the past, but I don't know how or why. It, I've studied the hell out of it and where it came from. It's very ancient, and I don't... I'm not going to deny that the um, time of year of our birth could possibly affect us in some way that we don't understand. And it's amazing how accurate it is, but also it's confirmation bias, and I know that. I've read some of the other signs, they really don't resonate with who I've been, and I didn't really look into it until later in life, but I really resonate with the Sagittarius, and it's strange. But looking up all my different charts could affect, you know, and I could say, well, oh, this might happen, especially with horoscopes. I find them to be useless. And this is why I am totally against going to psychics to look at your future. I would never do it. I have no interest in doing it. Not only do I believe that they're quacks, for the most part, uh, but uh, I just, even if it was true, you know, if you could see your future, would you? No, I would not. I think that would just completely devastate me. I mean, because I want to live a natural life and see what unfolds in the now. John Oliver did a really good show on psychics the other day, and I'm really glad he exposed the fraud. I'd like to do an entire video talking about psychics and whatnot, but I've already done kind of enough tearing apart of that kind of stuff lately, but, uh, you know, cold reading people, and oh, is there a J in the room? The whole uh, John Edwards thing back in the day was really popular. Um, you know, what's her name? Sylvia Brown, who was charging like $700 for a 20-minute phone interview, and she was booked for two years. These people are just leeches, and they're taking away from people by giving them hope about something that may or may not happen. When you're giving people advice about their relationships and whether they should dump their husband or wife, you know, you better know what you're talking about. But these people just didn't care. So uh, you should check out the John Oliver clip. It's on YouTube. And um, beyond that, I guess I've said what I came to say. I would like to believe in the personality types, but honestly, I don't find it does me any good because there's always something lacking. And I had several notes that I'd taken about that particular study, the, the Myers-Briggs uh, personality thing, and uh, I found it to be, uh, there were a lot of loopholes in it, because first of all, you have to decide if you're an introvert and an extrovert, and a lot of us are com somewhere completely in the middle, and it's very difficult to, uh, you know, you're basically going to say, yeah, that's me, whatever you end up picking. So, uh, if it is useful to people, I don't mean any offense. I just, that was my opinion on it. So I hope you all are doing well, and I hope you have a wonderful day. And as usual, if you have any questions, comments, leave them down below, and I'll answer as best I can. And uh, I'll talk to you all later. Have a good one. Hey, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Your support is what keeps this channel alive after all these years, and I appreciate all of you. If you enjoy varied content about anything and everything, hit the subscribe button for more. I won't burden you with ads or try and sell you crap you don't want through influencer marketing. I do this for the love, but if you do want to support my channel, you can visit me at Patreon at Carpo719. 
All Patreon supporters get free downloads of each video in podcast format. Comments are like currency. Your opinions and ideas help everyone who may read them. I welcome all discussions and respectful discourse, which I believe helps us all lead better lives through understanding. Be well, my friends. Take care.